Baphomet. 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 I was wanting to put it up here. I want you to see it. I'm not telling you a fairy tale. It is a satanic statue in front of the government building where the Ten Commandments once stood. You tell me God's not getting angry with America. You tell me God's not getting angry with His people who are called by His name. All it takes for evil to succeed is for good men and women to do nothing. What do we pray for when we come to a prayer meeting? Pray for our nation. Pray for its leaders. Pray against this satanic attack. We were born a nation who respected the value of life. Our forefathers believed in a creator that brought life into existence. Now we're a nation with streets flowing with blood. Our young dying in the streets and in our schools. Now they've got police in all the schools just trying to protect our young people. You want to know what happened? They took prayer out of school. They took this out of school. They the man God's angry with the curse of the whole living God. It's time that we wake up. That's the other side of that other nature of God. Child abuse is rampant. Majority of crimes against children are committed by someone related to them. The children are not even safe in their own homes. The predators, predators, pedophiles. Yeah, I know they're recorded, but I want you to understand something. It's time that the church stands up and understands where it was. God, he was preaching on this party, but God knew. We're a nation that glorifies violence. You let something good happen, and very seldom do the media even put it on. But you let violence take place. You let somebody get killed. You let somebody rape somebody. And all of them, they love to put that on there. I'm telling you, God's angry this morning. How did we get to this bloodthirsty place? Bloodthirsty land. I believe there's a direct correlation between the rise in violence in our society and the legalization of abortion. I believe that. How can we respect the life of any if we fail to respect and protect life in the womb? I know this is not a popular message, but God's been burning me up with it. I believe there's a direct correlation to it. The unborn who have no voice to speak, what will become of them? Another place that God is angry is the act of marriage is sacred because it was established by God in the beginning. It was validated by the Lord Jesus himself. God performed the first ceremony in the garden setting the landmark for marriage when he said, For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Marriage is defined by God himself as between a husband and a wife. God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Many in our country today are seeking to devile the act and institution of marriage by extending the bounds to include the marriage of a man to a man and a woman to a woman. That's sin. That is sin. It is still sin. How old will folks go when they're in a cesspool of sin? To add even more shame to these despicable acts we have churches ordaining and placing their stamp of approval on such filthy, abominable yes, acts. God hating relationships. How much more patient can God be with our country? How much longer? What can we as believers do, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. First Timothy chapter 2 
verses 1 and 2, there has never been nor will there be a revival that was not first brought on by prayer. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, Amen. if my people, 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, if my people will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. Then I will hear from the land. Come on, church. God thank you. And we are the church. We better begin to pray like we've never prayed. We must practice Christianity in our lives. I said practice it. We get our dander all stirred up over the events, such as what happened here in Montgomery, Alabama, when they pulled the Ten Commandments, made the, the governor there pull the Ten Commandments. We get all upset over prayer not being allowed in school. But how much are we praying at home? How much are we praying in the church? Jesus went into the house of God and took a rope and weaved it into a whip. And he drove the money changers. He drove them out. He said, my father's house shall be called a house of prayer. Oh, you say, oh God, he's getting his coat off. Oh, now I see some of you wrapped up in blankets and I'm burning up. We've got to pray. I ask you, do we pray in our house? Do we pray in our house? Do we pray in our homes? Do we pray with our families? Do we pray with our children? How many times have we prayed for the lost recently? We must walk the walk and talk the talk. The only hope for mankind is Jesus. The only way of escaping the judgment of God is through the Lord Jesus Christ. We must preach Jesus. Perhaps our nation would not be in the moral and spiritual decay that it's in if we would only pray. Amen. It's in a downward spiral. He has given us his powerful word and we have disregarded it. We've ignored it. He has given us anointed leaders and we have made them come and place them on a shelf in our life. And a man told me the other day, I was witnessing at a, at a store, and a man came up and he said, excuse me, sir, I really don't want to hear that. If I want to hear preaching, I'll go to a church. I said, then you need to go on and go shopping. He wants to hear it. And this man ain't shut up. So go shop. So go shop. Go shop. And he jerked that buggy out of that buggy cart and he took off down an aisle. That guy said, I think you made him mad. I said, I hope I did. I hope he is angry enough to come back and listen. That's our problem. We're afraid we're offend somebody. Amen. 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 The Constitution of the United States says we have the freedom of speech. Amen. If we don't have the freedom of speech, stand up and say what you think. Amen. 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 He's angry in the United States of America, and I don't think we really can stand in the face of such anger and wrath much longer. The United States has been here before. I recall a time when prayer was allowed in our schools. And God was blessing and keeping his hand upon the growth of our children. You never heard of a shooting in a school when prayer was there. You never wisely heard prayer draws the angel of protection of God of earth. For our nation is not a one nation under God. Our nation is a one nation under a party. Only a party. They were children, yes, energetic, yes, but they did not have the rebellion and anger that children have today. Pastor from West Virginia sent me a little video clip. He said, this happened this week in our school. Three boys, teenage boys in a classroom, got mad at the teacher and they whipped him. 
The picture showed of having him loaded on a gurney, putting him in an ambulance, and three teenage boys had beat him just about to death. You never heard of that when I went to school. You don't know why you didn't hear about it, but my daddy told me the more I ever had told it. He said, if you give that piece of trouble today, you got trouble with me when you get home. But today, because of money values, I care to come home to get me home to latchkey kids. You don't know why there is so much trouble. There's no parent there to be with them. And they just do what they want. No I was in school. We had chewing gum on campus, but we didn't have murders. We had no writing during class, but we didn't have 14-year-old girls get pregnant. We had gone and spitting paper rods into the hair of the girls across the room. But we didn't have those same boys cursing and hitting their teacher. We decided to get legalistic and listen to the loud voices telling us to rid the schools of God and of prayer and discipline. And now we have a godless society called public education. God's angry and rightfully so. Pastor, what do we do? We do our best to mend the damage. We stand up for the word of God and say and proclaim it loudly and strongly. What we do, we must become gap standards because the other side of God's nature is angry. Yes, He is a God of love. And I want you to remember Nineveh. God was fed up with Nineveh. God was angry at Nineveh. I want you to remember Sodom and Gomorrah. God was angry with Sodom and Gomorrah. Why? Because there was homosexuality. There was perversion in the lost forms. And God said, I'm going to destroy it. That same God that said, God is love. He loved us too much to leave us like we are. He loves us too much to let us continue to carry on the way we're carrying on. We do our best to love people, but when those same people are willing to compromise truth and faith and the standards of God, we must stand firm and refuse to ride along with them. That's what we do. And we do it naturally and without having to pray first. That's what we do. There are some days of old dedications and promises that each of us Christians have formally given to God. We need to go back and reclaim what the devil stole from us. There's some of you that are not in prayer warriors. And the things of this world have drawn the prayer life out of you. And instead of praying, you've just become lackadaisical. You have just become, just roll along with the tide. The brother trusted God is calling us back to the altars of prayer. He's calling us back to the altars of prayer. Yes, amen. It's a sovereign call. We need God and we need Him in a dire manner. We need to find people again who are hungry for sermons instead of sermonettes. And we need people who are tired of sin and sinning. If this nation will turn from their sin and reach for their Creator, then will He begin to see His hand again in protection and in peace. During World War II, I read this article the other day, and it really stuck with me. During World War II, there was a preacher who said this to his congregation. He said, we have spent years ignoring the ringing of church bells. And I know that's something old. I remember when I was a kid, we had a, an old stand out there with a big old bell. And about an hour before church time, I hear the Catholic church down here does it, and they begin to ring that bell. When we heard the ring of the bell, I don't care where we were at playing, Brother Donald, we shut out. We knew we had to get home and get a bath because in an hour it was church time. And this old pastor said, we have spent years ignoring the ringing of church bells, calling us to worship, and now our bells only ring to warn us of another invasion. The food for which we got into the habit of forgetting to say thanks now it's almost unattainable. This was during World War II because of rationing. 
nights that we were called to watch and pray and did nothing, now are spent anxiously waiting for an air raid upon our community. You better believe it. We did not send enough missionaries to convert the Japanese. No. Now we have to send soldiers to destroy them. You hear me? We have not trained our youth for service to the Savior. Now we must train them for killing our enemies. Our spiritual enemy is doing his best to distract us from the real battle. This is a World War II preacher. Our enemy is doing his best to get us offended at our own inconveniences and petty differences. He knows that if he can only get those full of the Holy Ghost to stay distracted, he can continue to do as he chooses until one morning we'll need to pray and there will be no prayer because the church will be gone. That's what the devil's thinking it's time for us to be strong in the faith. That's right. Stand like men and women of God and be Christian, Christ-like. Our families, our faith, our nation depends upon it. I pray that you will realize the lateness of the hour and allow the power of God to change your flesh to react in fervor and passion and prayer. Because God is angry. Jeremiah had it right. He said his throne remains forever. Long after the United States of America has been overrun by their enemies, God's throne will still stand. Even though our cities will be charred and burned and destroyed by our enemies, which are many, there will be a throne that will continue to stand for purity, justice, and righteousness. That's the truth. We're promised that the only ones who will stand with that throne are those who have that kind of character in their hearts, their soul, and their mind. That's the truth. Renew our days of old, Jeremiah said, Please. should be the cry of each of us on our lips yes, sir. as we head to an altar in prayer. My God, Jesus. Consecrate me. Dedicate me. Remind me, God, should be the passion on each of our lives as we walk out of the house of God and step back into a nation that is right from the judgment of an angry God. We have not ever tasted of the anger of God. We've only enjoyed the grace and the mercy. War except for the Civil War. War has always been somewhere else. That's right. Ah, on foreign soil. But if God never changes, then there is a side of Him that is subject to anger. That you don't want to see. And we must never forget that very important fact. You don't want to see His anger. We really don't want to taste that anger. And I'm reminded of the consequences of his anger. If you'll put Numbers 25 verses 3 and 4, I'm going to close. Believe me. Numbers chapter 25 verses 3 and 4. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. Does everybody understand who Baal Peor was? It was the prophet Baal. In modern times. It was Baal. A false God. A God who promised all kind of things. A God who basically ruled and dominated those people. And the prophet Elijah went to him and he said, If God be God, yeah. let's serve God. Let's serve if Jesus. Baal is God, he said, then serve Baal. He said, but we need a little contest. A little competition. He said, I'm going to give y'all the first shot. They built altars. They slew a bullock and they put him on those altars. And those prophets of Baal, come stand up here on this altar. Stand on that altar over there. Elijah went and sat out over a tree over there in the shade. He said, y'all go ahead now. Baal is, is God. If he, if he can consume this sacrifice, we all go serve Baal. Do you think? 
And they started, oh, hell, coming to consume our sacrifice. Oh, hell, and that went on all morning. Then the Bible says they got up on the altar and they started jumping and crying out to God. Go ahead. Don't fall off. <laughs>
the stand. Uh, there was a young man fishing one day in a lake, and I know Brother Ulysses and Brother Paul, I know they like to fish. I know Sister Annette, Brother Roger like to go fishing. I know Brother Brett does it for a living. But this young man was in the middle of a lake in a boat fishing. It was hot. He took his life preserver off because it was making him sweat too much. And this young man caught a big old fish and he got excited. And Sister Christine, he ran up over the front of that boat and he's trying to reel him in. And a guy passed in a boat and the weight flipped his boat and that young man fell over and he could not swim. He's struggling. Over his arms, kicking his feet. He breaks the surface of the water. Help! For God's sake. And he went back down. There was an elderly man in a boat not far from him. He started his boat up. He ran over there just as the young man was coming up the second time. Help! And he went back down. The third time he come up, that man was sitting there and he grabbed him by the hair of the head. He pulled him up to the edge of the boat. He got his arm around him and stammered. He pulled him over into the boat. He pumped all the water out of him. That young man was finally able to sit up. And he looked at him and he said, Oh, sir, you're my Savior. You saved me from drowning. The man said, Son, I'm just glad I was here. And I was able to get you out of the water. Four or five years later, Brother Donnelly got with the wrong crowd. A man was shot and killed, and he was charged with it. They walk into the courtroom. They're sitting at the defendant's table, and his lawyer's there. And the young man said, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? He said, I don't know, son. It's in the hands of a jury. At that time, a bailiff said, All rise for the honorable judge. And they called his name. And the young man looked up. And when he went to stand up, he grabbed his lawyer. He said, It's okay. It's okay. He said, That man saved me four or five years ago when I was in the lake. He's my savior. He's going to remember me. Everything's going to be okay. He said, Ask him if we can go up to the bench. The attorney says, Your Honor, would it be possible for us to approach the bench? And he says, Come. That young man walked up there and he grabbed the top of that judge's bench and he got on his tippy toes. He says, Hey, Your Honor, you remember me? No, son, I don't believe I do. Yeah, Your Honor, I was the boy that you pulled out of the lake out there four or five years ago. You was my Savior. And that judge looked at him with tears running in his eyes. He said, Son, that day in the lake, I was your Savior. But today, I am your judge. Today, I am your judge. Forty years ago, I was your Savior. I come to tell somebody this morning, today he's your Savior. But there's a time coming in the morning of every man that wants to die. And after that, the judgment seat of Christ. Right now, he wants to save you. Right now, he wants to set you free. Right now, he wants to give you a chance. But the hour is coming when the anger of the judge will say, Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I know you not. Get away from me. That's the other side of God's nature. Every head bowed, every eye closed. God is angry with America. Today I am a God of love and mercy and tenderness. Hearken unto my word and come unto me, all ye that are laboring and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. But in that day, I will be your judge. And I will cause you to be pronounced over. And you will know my wrath. Come while mercy is still here. While mercy is still here. Will you move this morning? 
Maybe you've been doing some things that you just really weren't sure how good it was or how bad it was. This morning, mercy's here. God is love, we read to you this morning. It's here. His love is here this morning. I don't want to be but the hour is coming when he will say, Depart from me. I know I you not. <laughs> Hear the voice of the Lord. He has spoken. <laughs> don't let nobody convince you that you're okay. If God's tugging at your heart, you need to respond to that tug. You need to get out of that pew and say, God, I know if I'm going to need to be. If I've done things that's made you angry, God, I'm going to ask you to forgive me this morning. If you can't get to these altars right where you're at, just lift your hands and say, God, search me, oh God. See if there be any wicked way inside of me. Search me, oh God, if I've been rebellious. Search me, oh God, if I have been rebellious. God, I repent. I repent. Consumed. The anger of God will be all that you get. His judgment. God bless these that are in the altars. Will you join? Don't let nobody convince you that this is not real. Don't let nobody convince you that this is not real. God's word said, I will laugh at your calamity when it comes.